hope you're having a good week. Just a couple of notices before the thought for the week this week. First is we're really, really close to the start of Lent. Um, and we're going to be using a Lent book this year called Foundations of Faith. And it's by Lee Gattis. Um, you can access that on lots of um, various online retailers or um, I'm sure local bookshops can access that for you as well. Um, please have a look for a link on our website if you need one. Um, otherwise, I'm sure you know how to access those. The other thing is that we've been called to prayer by the archbishops. Of course, we should always be praying for our nation. But at this particular time, uh, with the news that there is uh, over 100,000 deaths at the best estimate from Covid, um, the worst in Europe and one of the worst in the world, um, we need to intercede for our nation um, and for one another. Uh, please do be praying for uh, all the key workers, for our government as well, um, as they're trying to lead us to a very difficult time um, and pray that we would find healing across our nation and the world. There's lots of resources on the Church of England website. Well, two Sundays ago, I asked us to have a think about unity on the Sunday service, especially that is in terms of um, what Christian unity looks like. I wonder if you've managed to do that. I hope you have. Um, it might be if you haven't, maybe you need to pause this video and then come back to it in a minute. So what unites us as a church? Well, things I've heard, our title, we define ourselves as Christians. Problem is, um, self-confession is not always the same thing as, as truth, is it? And, you know, even Jesus said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So there must be more to it than that. Um, others have said to me before, what well, are buildings? We meet in church buildings, that makes us the church, doesn't it? Well, actually, there's Christians all over the world that don't meet in buildings or have to meet in different buildings. And as blessed as we are to have amazing, wonderful uh, church buildings, they do not make the church at all. And in fact, we're told, aren't we, in Scripture, uh, the church is the people, not the place. Well, the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, wants to find the Anglican Communion and that, in case you don't know, is the uh, the global body of churches of which the Church of England is a part um, and the founding member, in fact. Um, he wants to find the Anglican Communion as being united by and around the love of Jesus, shared heritage, by ways of worshipping and by what he called bonds of affection, our relationships and our love for one another. Well, there seems to be a trend of late of focusing on this last one, this bonds of affection, um, especially in these contentious times where opinions differ about different things. Um, or even sometimes focusing on our worship style, for example, how we use our liturgy um, or our shared heritage, the fact that we uh, all come from the same branch of Christianity. Well, as important as all these things are, and I don't want to diminish them at all, our Christian love for one another is very important in the church. Our worship is very important because it says something about um, not just the means, but um, says something about the God we worship, that order and that um, where everyone joins in uh, in different ways. Um, and our heritage actually also says a lot reminds us of some of the uh, errors of the past and helps point out some of the errors of the present and helps warn us of errors of the future, as well as, of course, pointing us um, most chiefly always to Jesus and the joy that comes in our tradition. However, these things are all irrelevant compared to the first one that the Archbishop lists, that we are united by and around the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you note there as well, this is a statement of doctrinal truth. We're united because Christ loves us. As scripture says, we love him because he first loves us. We are the church, his bride, and he died for her. That is how great his love is for us. That is the first always the first step, Christ's love towards us. But that we then love Christ in return, it's a response to his love for us. 
But notice also that it doesn't just say of Jesus. It says of Jesus Christ. That is the divine king, the saviour promised of old. This is not just the confession of a person. This is the confession of the God man, the king whom we submit to and we follow and we honour and worship and adore. Jesus speaks of Christian unity in the gospel according to John chapter 17 in his famous prayer and he prays these words may they be one father just as you and I are one but why is unity important well Jesus tells us in the next verse he says these words may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me our unity as a church is not just a convenience, a practicality, or even just a concept of being nice and polite to one another. No, our unity as a church is meant to point the world to the truth of Jesus and that he was sent by God. So when we have disunity, no wonder people say things like, how do I know which church to go to? Why should I listen when you can't even agree among yourselves? Jesus warned us, all these years ago. But note in verse 17 that we are the people sanctified by the truth, says Jesus. And Jesus tells us what that word is. Sanctify them, Father, by your truth. Your word is truth. So by all means, we need to have bonds of affection and we need to have that unity, that shared heritage, that shared worship but diversity in that worship too. But first and foremost, above all these things, let us delve into the word of God and unite over the truth it contains, the truth of who Jesus is, the truth of Jesus as king, the truth of Jesus telling us what it means to live in a way that honours him and honours one another. And so let me end with a prayer. Father, sanctify us by your word and unite us by it so that the world may know that you sent Jesus. Amen. May we be united around our Lord Jesus and the truth revealed in his word. And may you have a wonderful week.